time to come back into the pigeon's roost where it's a little bit warmer and I got all my electronic and robotic goodies and stuff. <laughs> These laser pointers are cold stare at. <laughs> so after returning and uh, straightening up in here from the broken pieces laying everywhere and kind of sorting through them and keeping what we needed, I uh, went back to our social network on MeWe. I will put the link in the description below, but there's people from all walks of life. I mean, from robotics, uh, from uh, growing whatever, uh, from lighting, uh, industrial controls, uh, internet communications, MQTT, uh, the PID calculations, whatever kind of thing you're trying to work with in the Arduino world, there's probably somebody there that knows something about it. I was like, what should I start my next tutorial series about? Uh, and a lot of people said, yeah, let's do arrays, data arrays. And I'm, I'm thinking, why are they hard to work with? You know, they're easy sometimes to work around with the data in uh, the C++ code on the IDE. Um, but sometimes it, they're kind of difficult to think. So you have to visualize in Visuino. Get it? <laughs> Pun intended. Between the in, how the index works and the data that's in those index locations, uh, it is kind of difficult to work with. And Bowian has has uh, released an update that has literally, uh, you know, at least 30 or 40 new components and tools for components that work with just data arrays. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start from the basic kind of thing. Uh, just, you know, three like different data arrays and make something to say, hey, let it have automatically switch between them and do whatever. So yeah, let's get it done. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that thing together that we're going to do the code thing on. Okay, I'll be right back. So I got that thing put together, that cool project that we're going to be using for this. <laughs> The not clock. It sure the hell looks like a clock, but it sure the beep ain't a clock. <laughs> it's slamy, man. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Never mind. You guys don't get it. All right. So before I started doing this video, like usual, I did some, you know, a little bit of looking into it. And, you know, I made myself some notes and about what we're going to go through and a couple questions and things like that. And I made myself a little a note sheet so that we could go through everything. So, data arrays. And some of the questions I thought that people would want to know is, uh, what is it and what types are there? Well, a data array is like a box with a bunch of envelopes in it. In each envelope, is a different number of pieces of paper. Each time you go back to the next envelope, there's an index number. One, two, three, four, however many envelopes you got. So you go, okay, so-and-so, your input request for the index says, hello, can I have the information that's in envelope number 4,372. You know, it's going to flip through there and look at index location, 4 million, whatever the hell, 472, and say, okay. And it's going to look in the envelope and say, wow, there's nine pieces of paper in there. An array is just something that has a bunch of different values that you can pick which slot you want the data from. Does that make sense? Like, okay, that part's done. So according to my little uh, notepad here, what types are there? There's a data array component included in Visuino for literally any kind of data you're going to work with that's been specifically built for that type of data, like a text or a binary, or an integer value, or an analog value, or an unsigned value, or a quintillion 
array. It's got a, a Quintarian array. So Visuino supplies you with all the tools you need and you don't have to write the code to adapt the array to what you're requiring to work with, like a string. Right there. All right, got that question out of the way. And the next one is, how do I work with them? Well, to work, to work with them, <laughs> we're gonna go to the screen, okay? All right, everyone, I'm gonna make this short and simple. Uh, this is promotional. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I need a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel to be able to have any kind of monetary income. I've been sitting at just around 300 for a while now. Uh, if you could subscribe, like, comment, and share, you know, it really does help out. And besides, if you go there, you can uh, watch my beagle ride the gold wing. She likes it. She drives my motorcycle with me. It's pretty cool. Up there is no problem. It's awesome. So yeah. If you uh, go to my channel, you can watch that. That's cool. Zoom, zoom, all gone. Yeah, so I guess the next thing I got to do is uh, walk you through all the stuff over here. So in order to properly work with the uh, arrays that you need, you're gonna you have to set a few things up in your sketch correctly. First of all, is you gotta have some kind of a counter, you know, whether it's incremental or if it's random or if it's user entered or if it comes from the internet or whatever, you have to be able to tell it what slot you want the information from. Now you just get an index counter right there and it just goes up one, one at a time and that's how we're gonna do this. Another one of the parts that you're gonna need is the arrays that you're actually working with for the type of data that you're using. In this one, I've got three uh, unsigned arrays with 10 index locations each. Now each of those index locations up at the top of the screen here, up at the top, uh, these are the actual layout of the data that's in those blocks. Um, another part of your array that you really should but don't require is some kind of a clocking system. You can change the index all day long if you want, but it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get that information out uh, repeatedly and dependably. Um, now, when this sketch starts, it comes in and it resets the counter to zero and then it gives the index a delay. Now this delay is intended to let the index count go to all three of the arrays, let the processor do what it's got to do, give it a little bit of time, say okay we're at number zero and it's going to give it three numbers. Those three numbers are going to be frequency, how many ramp steps there are, and how many total steps there are. And then it's going to go ahead and clock the display, give it time to send the information through the serial port, and then it's going to go ahead and trigger the component to move the stepper motor. After that's done, it gets the signal from the end cycle and goes to the cycle delay. And this gives you just a minute to look at the data coming out on a serial monitor, and it starts over. It increases the index by one, that gets the next value from all three of the arrays. Uh, then the display gets shown. Uh, it waits for that to complete and then the stepper delay hits uh, and it goes ahead and moves the stepper. After it's done, it gives you another little delay before it indexes the counter again. So this is just a continuous loop and these are basically the only elements that you require to be able to work with an array. Alright, and our next question is, does Visuino provide more tools to work with them than the Arduino IDE? And the answer is a resounding yes. Now, you think about it. If you're writing the code, you got to write the code to put all the data into the array. Okay? What if you got to change one of those values? You got to write the code to do that. You can't just go back and change a number in, in the script, right? Uh, what if you've got to delete it? 
And what if you got to add index locations or add data to the array? Uh, what if you have to have a string style setup? With the Arduino IDE, you have to actually write all that code. You know, granted, there's going to be something on someone's GitHub that you can probably use, you know, from the from the uh, commons uh, and get it done. But with Visuino, you don't have to do any of that. There's there's components that are literally designed to do that. You don't have to write any code. You just hook the wire up and it's done. You know. Two points, Mr. Bowling, and that was awesome. Okay, so if you were working with the Arduino, Arduino IDE, that'd be it. That's all you get with an array is just that, pretty much, right? But not with Visuino. With Visuino, there's a thing called an array value. Now, what this is is another separate component from the, the regular array style. It doesn't come with all of them some of them don't have it like the analog one has it and there's a few others that have it but with this specific style of array it gives you the ability to put different clock pins on an input side and depending on what clock pin gets triggered there's different lists of values that are included in the array. I mean, think about it. That's a multi-tiered uh, or a stacked friggin' menu. You know, if you push a button up and you go from menu page one to menu page two, you're just gonna clock that and it's gonna send the new array data. So it automatically will update with all the other portions of your sketch. I mean, it's, it's, it's great because you can add different, like, however many clock inputs to however many values you have so <laughs> yeah that's another good one this boy and that's a good one right there all right now back to the sheet the next style of array that's already included with Visuino no need to write the code for it is a complex array now with a complex array uh, it's basically just two values in would be your uh, actual number out is your imaginary number. So if you have different mappings for an RC controller, you know, slow, medium, fast. Slow makes the controls react slower. You can clock, 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 and get your different complex array numbers from actual to imaginary and then remap it using the imaginary numbers from the actual you see what I mean it's it's yeah I haven't messed with them because they seem kind of complex to me <laughs> the king the king of any Arduino based array system is the JSON array system I'm telling you this this king is bad. There's no, you can't touch it. Arduino, stay away. IDE, nope, 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 nope. Mm. Right. Now, this promotional segment is for our Patreon.com account. Uh, it was recently started to try to help uh, gain some money for some of the pieces that I need for my experiments. Because I don't just buy like a shield. I make my own shield. I buy the chips and the transistors and resistors and I rip them out of other stuff. Uh, but, you know, everybody needs materials. So I've got a few. Uh, I've got three Patreons. Thank you very much to those that are uh, donating at this time. You will be mentioned in the credits. And also, if you wish, go to patreon.com slash aka pigeon kicker. Um, all of the files that are used in this uh, uh, video are available on my patreon.com but you do not need to donate to get the files they're free you can get them just leave me a comment or a share or something like that you know give a little take a little uh, but I've already got a bunch for my uh, custom uh, component creation and my custom code creation 
uh, tutorials and things of this nature. So if you need to learn something, go check it out, you know, and uh, leave a thumbs up and maybe a dollar a month or something, you know. Every little bit helps. Now, you know I'm not prepared to call anything a king of anything unless I've looked into it. And I'm telling you, this is incredible. You can break down image files to binary into a binary array. So then you get a picture, right? And then you can take your thumbprint data and break it down into an array. Follow me? And now you can assign an employee ID number to that picture and thumbprint. And then you can add accesses through another array and add that for doors for secured areas uh, with like the ESP two thirty ESP thirty two cam. It exports a picture. You can use that digital image to match it with a camera. And if when you get that signal, if that picture matches one of the array index locations, you get a green light, the door opens up. <laughs> That's the JSON. You can literally build an array with whatever you need and then add pages to it. So that basic array and the array value, they can't touch it. With this JSON, you can put any one of those arrays in there, build multiple arrays, you can put arrays within arrays within arrays, you can import a JSON, you know, think about it, you want to control all your machinery from home, you can do something like that with this JSON, because you can transmit a JSON, it's a communication protocol for computers and, and microcontrollers and all that, so this is, this is SCADA, for SCADA is perfect. Uh, for unattended access, it's perfect. Uh, for visual recognition, it's perfect. Uh, send a robot out somewhere and let it walk through some hallways and it'll map out data points. Kind of good for that. If you get the picture, a JSON array is the ultimate array you can imagine. There is just absolutely nothing that compares with it. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, quick tip. Don't use permanent marker on your reusable thing. Garbage. <laughs> uh, files uh, from the Patreon page. Um, that zip file that says basic array sketch with the AKA pigeon kicker library. Um, go ahead and extract that wherever you download it to. This AKA pigeon kicker goes into your Arduino libraries folder. It's the same place where there's Visuino Pro and Metog are also there. Copy that over. All right, then you can close that. And this one here, basic array. Alright, that's the one you want. Go ahead and start the Visuino uh, you know, thing, I guess. Yeah. Now, to give you an idea of what project I picked for this, it is the Not Clock. It looks like a clock, but it's not a clock. <laughs> Alright. It's a cool act. Actually, I've done a lot of projects with the knot clock that does not have nothing to do with the clock. I don't know how I got that name. It's just one of those things, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, if you don't want to install the AKA Pigeon Kicker library to get the programmable EDP stepper, uh, all you have to do is just delete out of the sketch. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Both of these right there, delete selected, and it's going to get rid of the stepper delay and it's going to get rid of the actual stepper command components. But then, where it says from the display delay, you hit from the output there to the start of the cycle delay. So just wire the last delay in and yeah, you're good. Or you should be.
All right, so at the very least, the only thing you're gonna need to wire this correctly is the Nano, or an Uno, or a Mega, or whatever, just an, an Arduino board, pretty much. That's at the very least. Now, if you want to hook the controller up and run the EDP component and set it up kind of like the knot clock, uh, then you're going to need a TB6600 stepper driver uh, controller and then you just need a standard four wire uh, stepper uh, so <laughs> yeah there's like four or five six seven eight nine ten wires <laughs> so now that I showed you how to make a knot clock of your own you should have something like this let's uh, let's enjoy it for a second kind of fucking annoying it's actually really fucking annoying man listening to this thing go oh. yeah anyway <laughs> all right so now uh, if you want to ever add or remove uh, steps or index locations or envelopes from the box or add them to it uh, you just remember that you have to change your index counter uh, and you also have to add or remove the same amount of them in each of the arrays. Um, and you have to, if you're going to have 10 slots, remember, 0 through 9 is 10. 0 through 19 is 20. All right? All right, so if you ever end up wanting to change, like, the amount of uh, index locations in, like, the frequency and the ramp step and the total steps, I'm just going to call it FRT. Uh, hell, let's just call it the fart index. <laughs> fart index. All right. So if you want to, like, if you want to lengthen the fart index, you just add more elements into like F, R, and T. And then if you want to like change the numbers and change the type of fart index you have, then <laughs> you change the numbers. You know, in the same one across, so zero, zero, and you get different kinds of farts with different kinds of numbers. There, I fucking said it. Wow, that was hard as hell. All right, now that, that fiasco is over, and I gotta buy another whiteboard. That was freaking stupid of me. Uh, and you know, these videos do take sometimes money, as you see, for whiteboards in electronics and things like that in patreon supports us uh with uh, that kind of need and also with youtube i've only got 300 and something subscribers so i can't start getting any you know money from youtube until i hit a thousand so if you want to subscribe that'd be freaking great too thank you <laughs> ding dong <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. That was awesome and quick, man. That was quick. <laughs>